Hey guys, what is up? Steven here doing a, a quick video for you. Looks like I'm on a little bit of a delay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, sorry about that. So I uh, wanted to talk about a scenario that CBS put out yesterday, and that was the Chargers trading up for their offensive tackle. Uh, you know, if you haven't seen the mock draft or seen my tweets, uh, you know you know that uh, I, I'm talking about Ikim Ikwanu, Iki Ikwanu. So uh, CBS floated this idea, and I wanted to talk about it because, you know, obviously the right tackle position for the Chargers is really up in the air right now. Uh, last night we saw Billy Turner sign with the Broncos. So that was fun. <laughs> uh, really was hoping the Chargers would be able to sign him. But, uh, you know, they still have some decent veteran options. They have multiple connections through Joe Lombardi and Ryan Ficken to Riley Reef if they want to go through that route. Um, you know, they also have connections to Dennis Kelly, uh, the former Green Bay Packer who could still uh, reportedly be in talks there, but we, you know, we'll have to see how that one goes. Um, other than that, it, it does seem like the Chargers are going to kind of wait it out right now, uh, focus in on the draft, and maybe take the best player available at 17, and then kind of you know figure out the shuffling after the draft. So that's totally, <laughs> it's annoying, but that is okay. The Chargers are fine right now. Um, I still wholeheartedly believe that Storm Norton and Trey Pipkins will not be starting for this team. I know everybody's kind of freaking out about that possibility. I would frankly be shocked if either of those two started uh, week one for the Los Angeles Chargers, barring injury, of course. So this is a really interesting scenario to me, and I'll, I'll switch it up right here. and We'll talk about what CBS has the Chargers doing, um, and then we'll kind of run through a potential mock draft. So, um, of course, he, so right here you see uh, Chargers trading up with the New York Giants up to number seven overall. Uh, they get a 2023 six-round pick and the number seven overall in exchange for number 17, next year's first-round pick, and then a 2023 fifth-round pick. So um, the Chargers for this year essentially stand pat, which I think is a very important uh aspect in this scenario right the chargers do keep all of the rest of their picks as much as we have talked about them trading down and accumulating more picks this is a really interesting scenario and it, you know you see how this kind of pans this draft he has the lions going Malik willis uh texans taking trayvon walker sauce gardner four evan neal number five charles cross number six and then Ikim Iquano to the Chargers at number seven. So this is really an interesting scenario. I do think that if a quarterback does go to the Detroit Lions, you know, I think this is a possibility in terms of an offensive tackle being on the board at number seven overall to the New York Giants. So, um, you know, I've heard from my, my Giants friends that they are interested in trading down. They want to accumulate assets. And this would be fantastic for their rebuild, right? You get a future first round pick. And from their perspective, it makes a lot of sense. I could also see uh, the Carolina Panthers taking a quarterback here themselves. Lots of buzz around Kenny Pickett and uh, shoot, what's his name? Uh, Matt Corral from Ole Miss right now. So um, those three seem to be the quarterbacks that are taken. Uh, or gaining ske gaining steam, I should say, uh, as it pertains to going in the first round. So the question, obviously, that we have to ask and the Chargers fans and the Chargers front office has to ask is trading up for your future right tackle worth a future first round pick. So um, if you've been listening to this show for a while, you know how much I love Icky Iquano. I'm also a big fan of Charles Cross. So if this ended up being flip-flopped and they ended up landing Charles Cross in this scenario, I would be thrilled. I think the the way that I look at this is I'm in favor of trading up in this instance. You know, I think we are we are all expecting the Chargers to be all in on 2022. That's what the moves have told us. And I know the lack of a right tackle signing has been kind of frustrating. But the Chargers are still all in. That does not that has not changed. So 
you trade a future first round pick, you go get your right tackle of the future. And if you get it can be Kwanu and or Charles Cross in this instance, I think you have a absolute home run pick on your hands because you know this tackle class. I know everybody kind of looks at Trevor Penning as that guy or Bernard Raymond as that guy that follow the big three. But in my opinion, there is a drastic drop off after Charles Cross, who is my OT three to the rest of the guys. So, you know, I, I think pairing Equanu or Cross with Slater for the next 15 years, it, it's a no brainer to me because you are locking down the two tackle spots for the for foreseeable future. I mean, we have all sat here and, <laughs> And slodge through the days of Trent Scott and Sam Tevy protecting Philip Rivers' blind sides and, and, and front side. And now, if you're the Chargers and you can get Iguanu and Slater to be protecting Justin Herbert for the next decade plus, why would you not be in favor of that? You know, if you listen to our offensive tackle episode, you know that, first of all, you know that I hate comparisons, but when I see one, and I feel good about it, I'm fine, obviously, giving that. So, to me, Iki Iquanu reminds me a lot of Jason Peters, the former Philadelphia Eagles standout, who I don't know if he's still trying to play or not, but uh, had a decent year with the Bears last year. But a Hall of Fame tackle, and that kind of player, that kind of movement is what I see with Iki Iquanu. The, the pass blocking, the pass pro is definitely a work in progress. I do think that there is some technique, things that need to be hashed out. In terms of physical upside, physical prowess, and run blocking ability, Iquano has everything that you could possibly want in an offensive tackle. That's why he's my offensive tackle number one. And in this instance, the Chargers, like it's an easy comparison, right? You could get your Jason Peters and Iquano, and you get your Lane Johnson and Rashawn Slater, and you have two great tackles, great tackles, or at least the potential to be that for the next 10 years. Like, I'm sitting here. Why would why would anyone be against this this scenario? Because you get the tackle spots completely locked up. You don't have to worry about the future because right now, you know, in my opinion, the best tackle, the best path forward for the tackle was signing a player like Billy Turner, Riley Reef, Dennis Kelly, whoever, and then in the third round, fourth round, you take the tackle version of Brendan Hymas. Well, that still kind of creates some uncertainty, right? Like, because your fourth round tackle, there's no guarantee that that player becomes a quality starter. And history has shown that in order to get quality offensive tackle starters, you've got to do it in the first round. So why not go do it in the first round? Why not go trade up for one of the big three and, you know, get these two elite bookends for Justin Herbert and the future going forward? So obviously this would limit what the Chargers can do next year. They did not have, they would not have a first round pick. And I totally get that. But if you are trading up in the draft and you're willing to go all in right now, I think offensive tackle is a fine trade to do that. So, of course, now the question becomes, what does this look like for the Chargers and uh, in 2022? So for that, I'm going to do a quick mock draft simulation on Pro Football Focus. and. Um, kind of see where the Chargers are at from here on out. So I'm not going to do the full seven rounds in this instance. I wanted this to be a quick video, and um, we'll do this same trade that uh, CBS has entered. All right, here we go. So we'll see if the – okay, we got Cal Hamilton number one in this instance. All right, so we'll see exactly if this it looks like it is going to hit. Okay, well, there's Icky, so we might not get Icky, but we'll get one of the tackles. Yeah, there's Derek Stingley, and there's Sauce Gardner. So, all right, I'm going to trade up here. We're going to swap picks, and then we're going to add that one in there. And we'll, you can handle the day three picks later. So I'm going to just do those ones, and we'll see what happens. All right, so in this instance, you have Charles Cross on the board. You have Evan Neal on the board. Um, you know, I'm going to take Charles Cross because I highly doubt that Evan Neal is here. Um, but, you know, for, for argument's sake, I'm just going to take Charles Cross because that's kind of who we talked about. Somebody, again, that I'm a big fan of. I think he has 
the experience that you are looking for. Now I'm going to speed this up since we don't pick for a while. Um, but, you know, in terms of Charles Cross, he's not the same kind of prospect as Iki Iquanu to me, but he's a very, very solid player. I think he has a higher ceiling as a pass protector. He's more well-rounded in that regard. And his run blocking has improved every season that he's been at Mississippi State. So I'm, I'd be a big fan of the, It's the same kind of thing. Obviously, Iki Iquanu, if you can get him to me, he's the best tackle in the class. Great. If you can get Charles Cross, great. Evan Neal, great. And I do think that, you know, Evan Neal does have that right tackle experience. So maybe that is a possibility. Um, but to me, that's it's, it's a no-brainer either way. So, you know, in this instance, Max Mitchell is here in the third round. That could be something worth exploring. Um, but, you know, obviously you have Charles Cross. I'm happy with that. So, um Right now, with the Chargers on the board in the third round, um, kind of rounding out their draft class, if you will, um, just kind of scrolling to see who is here. I would love to see the Chargers get another defensive back playmaker or a wide receiver in this instance. So um, I'm going to go with Calvin Austin right here. Give me that juice. Give me that returner ability. Uh, obviously, slightly undersized, which I've mentioned before, uh, but big fan of the player and really kind of helping this offense go to the next level with Charles Cross and and um, Calvin Austin. Excuse me. Had a total mind blank right there. All right. So now the Chargers have a tackle. They have a receiver. Now, in this instance, you absolutely have to go with the defensive playmaker, in my opinion. We'll see who's on the board. You can maybe go with the running back right here. That kind of seems where the board is, is dictating. So we've talked a lot about the lack of an edge rusher three. Um, Tyreek Smith is somebody that I like a lot. I think he's a really solid player. I think he's uh, edge 10 for me overall. And really, by the time you get to the fourth round and beyond, uh, it, it gets kind of dicey. Auma Awuzarike could be interesting. He's, he's listed as an edge on PFF, but... Uh, he's more of that interior defensive lineman rusher, in my opinion. So that'd be interesting as well. Uh, Braxton Jones, tackle from Southern Utah. Actually grew up down the street from me. <laughs> Fun fact. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with Tyreek Smith here. Get my edge rusher three, four, whatever you know you have. Uh, but the Chargers do need to get an edge rusher at some point. And the fourth round is kind of the, the last round to get a true starter or potential starter in that regard all right so now i'm looking at potentially adding a running back pierre strong somebody that uh, fits great what the chargers need in my opinion that home run threat that slasher running back um it was Enrique still here so i could go another defensive lineman uh marquan mccall maybe get another nose tackle that's absolutely not happening JT Woods. All right, I'm going to play the safety game a little bit later. So Bo Melton, Tyquan Thornton, players that I'm really interested in. Uh, if the Chargers don't go receiver early, which obviously I did in this instance. All right, so because of where the board is at right here, I'm going to go with my running back. I'm going to go with Pierre Strong, South Dakota State. Give me that slasher. Give me that home run threat uh, that the Chargers desperately need on offense. So Again, I just wanted to do the five rounds, do something quick and talk about this kind of scenario because, you know, the Chargers still could get a great draft class because this current draft class would not be affected in this instance. So PFF does not like the trade up, <laughs> um, but obviously you get Charles Cross, you get Calvin Austin, Tyreek Smith, Pierre Strong. So again, this doesn't really change anything for this current draft class, obviously with your 2023 first round pick being traded, this is really the risk that you pay. So really interesting scenario. And I do think that we could see, let's go trade up if one of these tackles falls um, because we've seen him do that. Unfortunately, we've never seen him trade back before um, in the first round. We've, we've seen him trade up a couple of times. So if the chargers really feel like their offense is a right tackle away from taking that next step, and I do think that this is a possible outcome, maybe not all the way up to seven, maybe not trading a future first round pick, 
But, you know, right now there's there's a lot of buzz that, you know, some quarterbacks could be going higher than we think. There's all the pass rushers, of course, all the corners. So there is a possibility that somebody like Charles Cross, that somebody like Evan Neal or Iki Kwanu is maybe sitting there like at 10, 11. And in that instance, absolutely, I think that point you would not have to give up for uh, give up a first round pick. But I'm absolutely in favor of this scenario. This really is like the final, the final push, right? Like the final sigh of relief of the Chargers going all in, getting that elite tackle prospect to pair with Rashawn Slater, pair with Justin Herbert. And that's the other thing here is that this gives the Chargers kind of their core of the future set, right? Like right now, we we a lot of the Chargers core roster are guys on their second contracts outside of Justin Herbert and Rashawn Slater, of course. Um, but now you have Cross, Slater, Herbert, Asante Samuel Jr., maybe Josh Palmer hits, maybe Trey McKitty hits, whatever have you, and they can kind of be the future of the Chargers roster. And I've always said this, man, an elite offensive line raises the floor of your team like nothing else. You know, you can have an elite secondary, elite pass rush, elite quarterback play, elite receivers, you know, outside of that quarterback, an elite offensive line elevates the ceiling like nothing else. And you, in this instance, you would have Charles Cross, Rashawn, Rashawn Slater, Corey Lindsley, and Matt Filer for the next two or three years. And then Charles Cross and Rashawn Slater kind of take that mantle for the next 10. So really interesting scenario here brought up by CBS. Um, and I think this is something worth exploring, obviously, because I'm doing a video about it. So uh, like I said, I'm in favor about this of this excuse me um if you are not let me know in the comments i think this is a really interesting scenario to discuss so uh let me know what you guys think that's gonna do it for me today and we'll see you guys later